So for 12A, I walked around and I saw two different strategies that people used. Some people used the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says that if I want it to be a factor, well, this is the remainder theorem and the factor theorem, if I want it to be a factor, if I call this P of X, then when I plug in P of negative 3, which would be B times negative 3 cubed minus 2 times negative 3 squared plus a negative 3 minus 6, that should equal 0. And so if I multiply everything out here, negative 27B, this will be 9, negative 18, minus 3, minus 6, it's 0 equals negative 27B minus 27. So 27 equals negative 27B, and B is equal to negative 1. So that's using the factor theorem and the remainder theorem and how you would show all of your work to get that. If we wanted to solve this with synthetic division, we could do that as well. Because synthetic division, you would know that you have b negative 2 negative, well, I've got to look at my numbers here, b negative 2, 1 negative 6. And you're dividing by x plus 3, so you would put a minus 3 on the outside. And what do we know in the end? we know that it has to have no remainder. So this is the information that we're given at the beginning. With that information, we could work backwards. What has to be here? A 6 in order to make it 0. If there's a 6 there, what has to be here? Negative 2. Negative 2 there means this is a negative 3. If negative 3 there means that's a 1. A 1 there means this is 3. A 3 there means this is negative 1. And that gets brought down so you'd be able to tell using synthetic division that B is equal to negative 1. Now when you get to part B, one of these methods works better than the other. The synthetic division one runs into some trouble because there's two places for your D value that you don't know. There's still ways that you can figure it out from there, but it's not easy. So for part B, when you do part B, you might find that using the remainder theorem and the factor theorem is better than synthetic division. I think so far we found out that most of the times we've liked synthetic division to find the remainder better than the remainder theorem, but this is an example where the remainder theorem works better than synthetic division. All right, we're not going to, I'll leave B for you to do.